disease vectors, it is important that insects be continually studied and examined so that the diseases they bring and outbreaks they cause may be further managed or better yet prevented. This then grounds the importance of medical entomology. To briefly introduce the field of medical entomology, this video will cover the basic processes done in this field. It is through the steps that the field of medical entomology relies upon, therefore, the proper execution should be observed. Come with me as we discuss this matters. The collection tools used are, first we have the one-fourth bend paper and this is where the bait is placed. Next, we have the ziplock that feeds the one-fourth bend paper but not too large and not too small because this is where the bond paper with the collected insects will be temporarily placed after collection. Next will be the baits for learning insects. These are the peanut butter, a source of carbohydrates or sugar, and the tuna sardines, a source of protein. Next will be the alcohol sprayer with alcohol used to slowly kill insects and impede their movement. Next will be the test tubes with alcohol and cork. This is where the specimens are initially after cleaning or collection. And next we have the fine paintbrush used for picking up small specimens. Next will be the insect net which is used for collecting flying insects. This insect net is made from a badminton racket soon with an island net along the circumference of its head. And lastly we have the killing jar used to slowly kill insects without damaging their morphology. This killing jar is made from a mason jar, corrugated board, scissors, and cotton balls. It is loaded with chloroform, the killing agent. There are various tools used for general insect collection. Some of these tools may not be readily available or readily bought, but through the combination of household materials and a little handiwork, alternatives of them can be made. So it is important that before going to the field, all needed materials are checked for their condition, repair if needed, and loaded inside the collector's bag. Doing so aids in increasing site productivity and aids in lessening time wasted due to missing and faulty tools that hinder a successful insect collection. In catching insects in the field, two types of collection may be employed, active and passive collection. The former requires the collector to personally seek out and collect the insect, which can be done through general hand collection and use of insect net, among others. The latter, on the other hand, involves setting up of traps, thus not requiring the collector to actively seek out the insect. How to conduct both of these methods will be further explained. For general hand collection, collection of insects may be done through the use of hands, but with proper care, tweezers, or with insect nets. Collected insects will be placed inside a killing jar and afterwards inside a test tube with alcohol for preservation. On the other hand, for passive collection, baits must be placed in intended location for a set amount of time. Here, peanut butter and tuna baits were each placed in bond paper and left for 30 minutes in different locations around the campus. After the allotted time for collection, the collector sprayed alcohol onto the bait to immobilize the specimens. The bait was carefully removed from the paper without removing any of the specimens collected. The paper with the ants is then put inside a Ziploc bag. The ants were submerged in a petri dish with distilled water for cleaning before they were placed in alcohol vials. Remember, in both collection methods, no taking is necessary. It is important that collectors assign a unique code for each specimen and take note of the date it is collected and the GPS coordinates of the site it is collected from. Accounting plays a vital role in specimen collection because it helps the researcher keep track of the information needed for further laboratory activities. Simple note-taking and Excel can be used for this. As for our group, Excel was utilized as this provides easy data sharing, prevention of loss of data because of paper tampering, and has features that help save time in accounting data. For accounting of specimens, in Excel, the researcher can create a table containing the code allotted for each species collected, number of individuals collected for each species, location where they have been obtained, methods of their collection, and the collector's name. Later on, when they have been identified, rows for their taxonomic classification may be added. A single fieldwork can generate lots of data. Therefore, it is important that this be written or typed and stored as surely they will be used when insect analysis and writing of paper commences. By accounting and manually or digitally inputting such data, data collection becomes more organized. 
and repeating of already accomplished work is avoided, thus making the work easier and more efficient. For the mounting of the specimens, various materials were utilized and these materials are pinning block, entomological pins and puncher, paper, forceps, water-based glue, dissecting microscope, entomological probe, and eguchi ball. But before the procedure, sufficient knowledge in using the materials mentioned is needed in order to make use of them efficiently. The teardrop-like stage where the specimen will be placed is made using the entomological puncher and a piece of paper. After the punching process, the punch papers will then be pinned and with the aid of the pinning block, the pin is gently pierced on the round edge of the stage until it is partially attached. Then the stage is placed on the desired hole in the block. The pin is then gently pressed down until it goes through the paper and reach the bottom of the pinning block hole. And one important note is that the stage should be positioned on the 3 fourth of the pin's height. The forceps is then used to manipulate the specimen to properly mount it in its most desired position for clear physiological observation. The specimen is best oriented laterally with the legs and arms facing the right. For flies, the pin must be pierced on its right portion of the thorax. For ants, the first and second legs must be placed in between the paper stage. The successfully mounted specimen is then placed on an eguchi ball, which functions for rotation and easy maneuvering of the specimen during observation. Dissecting microscope is then used to observe and identify the collected specimen. Lastly, two important labels must be attached to the pin. First is the determination label containing the order, family, genus, and scientific name of the specimen. Second, the identification label where the locality, coordinates, date of collection, and collector's name are written down. In specimen identification, we will use a dichotomous key, which is used by entomologists, which is the expert in studying insects. It composes of different morphological statements and characteristics and help us in determine its family, subfamily, and genera. When utilizing a dichotomous key, it starts with two stated possibilities, options 1A and 1B, in describing a prospective specimen of interest. We will choose just one of the available alternatives. The yes response should properly describe the specimen, and the no response should categorically not represent the specimen. Since the dichotomous key utilizes species morphology for their identification, it is therefore important that the researcher is well knowledgeable of the various morphological terms used for their species of interest. In our actual laboratory experiment, we used the dichotomous key found in the published journal entitled A Synoptic Review of the Ant Genera, Hymenoptera Fermicidae of the Philippines by General and Outbreak 2012. In our specimen, we will identify the family and subfamily of our observed specimen. So by that, we will use identification key in order to obtain that. So in the first statement, it involves the petioles present, while in number two, the petioles absent. So based on our observation, we observe that the structure of petiole is visible. So by that, we will go to the, to the key number seven. So the, the uh, description of that is the Mesonotum and pronotum. So, so and so forth, the dichotomous key is the next by step process until we obtain the subfamily and family. In the first ant, we obtain the family for Missidae, the subfamily for Missinae, and the genus Osophila. While in the second ant, we obtain the family for Missidae, the subfamily for Missinae, and the genus Solenopsis. Remember that proper identification is necessary as this tells a lot about the insects, their lifestyle, behavior, and causative agents or illnesses they may carry. It is important that after identification, species with their data and determination label are placed inside a tackle box. This functions for the storage and display of mounted specimens.